thank you, Bill. Uh, I appreciate uh, what you and the church here is committed to do. It's a good thing. It's an important thing, a necessary thing. Uh, for those who were not here last night, uh, I am Craig Branch. I'm a regional director for a ministry called Watchman Fellowship. Watchman Fellowship uh, has been around since 1978. It's one of the largest of the uh, Christian counter-cult or discernment ministries. We're involved in uh, several areas of ministry. One is to provide education. We do that both uh, in Christian churches. Uh, we do it in colleges, high schools, civic groups about cults. We educate about uh, religious movements and cults and world religions and those things that are, of course, antithetical to the Christian world and life view. The, um, we're also involved in training Christians. We have a responsibility to help equip the saints for service, to help train Christians into how to more effectively share their faith with people in cults, giving them an opportunity to uh, make a decision to come to Christ, to evaluate the merits of, uh, of the Christian faith in relation to the, the faith that they've been taught. Also, we're involved in direct evangelism, getting people out of cults by sharing the gospel and letting them understand more information about the different groups, what they've been exposed to, so they can, again, make an informed choice. The uh, topic today is Scientology. Uh, I've never done a six-hour seminar on Scientology. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we have a couple of ex-members here uh, uh, that will be participating. I've never uh, participated with them before. I just met them, as a matter of fact, yesterday for the first time. And um, we will be, uh, they'll be sharing interchangeably with me later on. Uh, we'll just kind of uh, wing it after a while, but uh, we have a certain structure here, but uh, some flexibility. Today we're talking about the group called Scientology. Our Church of Scientology have various uh, official titles. Let me read to you from their Dianetics and Scientology Technical Dictionary. Scientology, it is formed from the Latin word CO, which means know or distinguish, uh, which means the word outward form by which and the inward thought is expressed and made known. Thus, Scientology means knowing about knowing or science of knowledge. Scientology is used to increase spiritual freedom, intelligence, ability, and produce immortality. It's an organized body of scientific research knowledge concerning life, life sources, and the mind, and includes practices that improve the intelligence, state, and conduct of persons. A religious philosophy in its highest meaning as it brings man to total freedom and truth, total truth. Also, we have Dianetics, the definition of Dianetics from the same source. D uh, Dianetics from the Greek word dia, and nous uh, from the Greek soul. The word dia means through or towards or through, and nous means uh, soul. Uh, it was deals with a system of mental image pictures in relation to psychic or spiritual trauma. Uh, thus, Dianetics is used to knock out and erase illnesses, unwanted sensations, uh, some came before Scientology. It, it, it deposed of the body illness and the difficulties a was having with his body. A technology that runs and erases locks, secondaries, and engrams, and their chains. These are tied... Uh, particular nomenclature or words that uh, are familiar to Scientologists, but not to the average person. Dianetics could be called the study of man. It is a science of mind. That's part, part of the definitions given to Scientology and Dianetics. What we believe to be the truth, or what total freedom is, is uh, taught, says this, Colossians 2.8, see to it that no man takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in him 
you have been made complete. He is the head over all rule and authority. Also, we're given instructions as Christians in Ephesians chapter 5, which I mentioned last night, verses 11 through 13. Do not participate in the evil deeds of darkness or unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of some of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. Also, we're given the instruction, the teaching in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and following. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying every speculation and every lofty thought raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I frequently had an opportunity to speak with Scientologists uh, in a not-so-wonderful uh, context now and then, and I remind them about David and Goliath. And I remind them who won that one and who will continue to win in the long run, oftentimes in the short run, but especially in the long run, who wins those battles. And it's important for us to understand what is Scientology. And it's true. Now, our world is a marketplace of ideas. Among these ideas are many competing religions and religious philosophies in competition for the souls and the lives of men. Our country allows for the freedom of thought and for the freedom of religion. People have the right even to be wrong about what they think or believe. And it's a precious right. But with that broad freedom, abuses and certainly error will and can occur. It is our freedom of speech which allows us to debate these religious philosophies and to proclaim and expose corruption, errors, deception, fraud, and exploitation in order to protect people's rights, other people's rights, and their freedom to choose. Choose without coercion, manipulation, and deception. So it's a check and balance system, and it's an important one. It needs to be protected. In my 12 years of full-time involvement with cult apologetics, cult evangelism, worldview education, in debate and dialogue, I have never witnessed nor experienced such an evil, such an ab abusive, uh, such an abuse of power, such an attack and assault on freedom of religion as I have with Scientology. That's a strong statement, but it's my experience. And I would dare say, from talking to many others in the Christian community, and especially in the cult apologetics community, which there are over about 500 different organizations, uh, I don't think that they have ever encountered any as well. So abusive and so uh, uh, much of an attack against our freedom to speak out about religious beliefs. Today we're going to examine the claims and practices of Scientology, especially in relationship to our Christian beliefs and our ethical standards that are derived from our beliefs. Scientology claims to be the ultimate truth, which automatically puts it into direct conflict with Christianity. Christians have the right and responsibility biblically to examine and to test. 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 and 21 says, do not despise prophetic utterances. What that means is people that claim to be speaking truth, ultimate truth. Do not despise this, but instead examine everything carefully. Test everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good. That is our responsibility and right as a Christian. And in our country is our right. Is, is Scientology a religion or is it a religious front? 
for a business? Or could it be both? Also, what about its practices? Are they moral and ethical according to the standards of our culture? Do they employ hidden agendas? Do they employ the con game of bait and switch? What tactics does Scientology use to suppress dissent and accurate review and exposure of their true teachings? These are important questions. We will look at the actual history, not myth, not legend of Scientology for some of these conclusions. For instance, let me read to you something from um, San Rosa, San Rosa News Herald, Santa Rosa, California, an article they did, an extensive uh, study or in-depth report on Scientology years ago. They are, they are quoting uh, Eugene Metten, senior editor for Reader's Digest and writer of two articles highly critical of Hubbard's organization. He says this, Scientology, quote, Scientology is far more than, a, than mere religion. An analysis of sworn testimony and the findings of official tribunals in 12 nations plus independent investigation reveals it to be a multinational racket masquerading as a religion. Scientology is one of the oldest, oldest, wealthiest, and most dangerous of the major new religions or cults operating in America today. These are strong words. This is what his opinion is, his findings. Also, Boston attorney Michael Flynn plus six other attorneys go even farther uh, in a recent 196-page report on the group. Quote, there is substantial, perhaps overwhelming, evidence to support the conclusion that despite Scientology's attempted religious front, it is in reality a criminal, fraud-ridden, commercial, profit-motivated enterprise engaged in the practice of psychotherapy with a military structure and operational methods designed to accumulate money, information, and power." Unquote. Again, strong words, strong views. Did they arrive at those views lightly? I think not. One major concern, though, are the public pronouncements that the Scientology makes in their literature that one can be a Christian or any other religion for that matter and still be a Scientologist. Scientologist, that is, one who believes in and practices the philosophy of Scientology. Can a person be a Christian or member of other religion and still be a practicing, believing Scientologist? That's what they say, but that's not what the facts bear out, which we'll look at. For instance, and by the way, there are a lot of, there's a lot of propaganda and literature, you've gotten some of it, that will try to deter you from examining these things or listening. I was talking to a Scientologist recently and she expressed some concern to me. She was the head of the public relations for the state of Georgia, so I guess that's an official position of the church, and stated to me that they were quite concerned about who I was bringing to the, this conference to speak with ex-Scientologists. And I said, well, well, who do you think I'm bringing? I mean, how do you know who I'm bringing? And they said, she said, well, you're bringing, you've talked to these people. She mentioned five people. Five people that I had talked to by telephone, one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody else knew. Interesting. These are, these are Christian books that list Scientology as a cult. Here we have... There's a number of them, it's just, just, just in my library. I'm sure I didn't go to the regular library, to the uh, more thorough library, but this is a library of books that include Scientology described and listed as a cult. These are from major publications, major Christian denominations and publications, and a few others, too. And I just want you to notice the sixth one down, Encyclopedic Handbook of Cults in America by J. Gordon Melton. Now, the reason I mentioned J. Gordon Melton here, this is very important, it's because uh, the Scientologists, in an effort to suppress information, to suppress information, 
uh, what they have done typically, and what they've done here at this church, is they enlisted what I call their secondary sources, some religious um, scholars, at one at SMU, uh, Southern Methodist University, of course, is a liberal uh, theological perspective. The chairman of the department writes a letter to the pastor, not to me, doesn't, give, doesn't copy me, just to the pastor, and says that Watchman Fellowship is a hate organization. It says that Watchman Fellowship is, an invol is involved in covert and illegal, quote, rescuing of people which can only mean that we're involved in kidnapping. He called that. These are libelous statements. Now, obviously, this man does not know anything about Watchman Fellowship. And this is the kind of thing. Well, they also will, they'll also, by the way, some of these people that wrote letters are listed in the back of the, your Freedom magazine that you got when you came out here, um, came in here today. And some of these people are what we call cult apologists. Say Gordon Melton is also listed in there, and he is frequently used uh, in cases, some kind of some court cases, and uh, gives seminars, conferences around the country defending cults, including Scientology. And yet, interestingly, J. Gordon Melton lists in his Encyclopedia Handbook of Cults in America. He lists. Let's see who he lists. My goodness, we have the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. We have Jehovah's Witnesses. We have the New Age Movement. And we have the Church of Scientology. Now, this is, you know, play fair here. And understand what um, they say out of one side of the mouth and what they say out of the other side of the mouth. Now, let's look at some of the claims here the Scientology makes. This is from an official publication of Scientology called Scientology Catechism. Is Scientology a cult or a secret society? And that's the question. Answer, not at all. Scientology literature is freely available to anyone. Half truth. Not all, the impression is that all Scientology literature, just like in a Christian bookstore, or your Bible, or you go to the, uh, your, the Muslim uh, uh, study center or the, uh, the uh, temple, and you'll find that the Quran and their literature, the Hadith, etc., is available to anyone. But not all Scientology literature is supposed to be available to everyone. We hold no secret rituals. Not true. Not true. Even though there are confidential materials in the upper level courses, well, wait a minute now, the, no secret rituals, but I guess confidential and secret are different. There are no confidential materials in the upper level courses. This only exists to ensure that a student does not impede his progress or that his friends, by studying materials, he is not yet qualified to handle. Now, this is a very important sentence that they make, and I want to hold them to it. Even though there are, no confident, there are confidential materials in the upper level courses, this only, this what, this confidentiality, only exists, the only reason it exists, is to ensure that a student does not impede his progress or that, or that of his friends by studying the materials he's not qualified to handle. I received a large packet of material that apparently the Scientologists are accumulating for, I think, the uh, Dennis Ehrlich case to try to show that it is proper for a religious organization which does have certain constitutional rights that distinguish it from a business and other corporations, tax exempt status, etc. For a religious organization, they're trying to prove that it's okay to have um, uh, what are they called? Trade secrets, which is a corporate uh, uh, entity, a title. Trade secrets are religious material. Um, and that's, of course, going to be an interesting case. And I mean, I don't see how in the world that could ever be, they could make a case for that in, a free, in our free, with the freedom of religion that we have. But the um, uh, issues that these, they gave a, a big, thick list of religious uh, people's uh, opinions about this, and they make all kinds of gross, improper analogies. And I'll be glad to, to share those with people at the proper time on that. But these are 
examples. They say, well, Christianity has a secret body of knowledge. Jesus said, some things I do not tell you because you're not yet ready. That's proof that Christians hide material, can hide materials or keep material secret. That's not what that means at all. Anybody who knows what the Bible means, talks, that's talking about before Pentecost, before the Holy Spirit came out, and it talks about the, um, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to be the teacher, and these things are not able to be understood yet. It doesn't mean that you can't have them. They don't have access to them. Also, Hebrews 5 passage is listed. Wherefore, now you ought to be teachers who still have need for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the Word of God. You still need milk and not solid food, but solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, had their senses trained to discern between good and evil. The point is, it talks about having milk and solid food. Solid food is for the mature. It has nothing to do with disclosing or hiding documents or information. Also, they talk about the Mormon temple ceremony, the Mormon secret temple ceremony. Uh, for instance, that uh, this is only uh, held uh, or exposed to people who have achieved a certain rank in Mormonism. That's true. Other people are not allowed to get a temple recommend. You have to be uh, a tithe payer. You have to not have any anti-Mormon literature in the house, which is interesting. I never have read any anti-Mormon literature, which is interesting. And you have to uh, be a morally upright person, etc., etc. You have all these ethical standards you have to, to uh, abide by in order to get a temple recommend. Only 25% of Mormons get to go through the temple, or actually do go through the temple, and learn their secret ceremonies. But there's a big difference between you as a, as a Mormon being uh, within the Mormon faith, being allowed to go through certain steps and processes, and saying that this material cannot be free and available to be studied by academics and criticized and, and given analysis of. That's a huge leap. But they're going on. They're going on. This is, um, no, 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 no. Uh, excuse me, you're not allowed, not allowed to talk. Not allowed to talk. Sounds kind of one-sided this. Okay, let's stop there for a second. I need some juice. If I may have your attention. We have, we've asked you, on the basis of protocol established, uh, not to speak, to write questions down. You may differ. That's perfectly permissible. Uh, but we've asked you for, it will not do you any good to raise your hand. I'm asking you not to speak. We, I'm asking you not to speak. I've warned you that you will have to be dismissed if you speak. I've warned you. I, I, okay, you may leave. You, no, 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 you may not say a word. You may not. You, you may not. You may not. You, you, you may not. I'm sorry. You, There'll yeah, be I'm a sorry. question and answer period uh, with written questions, and we will endeavor to answer those questions. We'll That's endeavor good. to answer those questions, but this is not proper. It's to waste time. It's all right. It's all right. It's permissible. It's all right. Feel please leave. Now, obviously, in the free marketplace of ideas, as has been said, People will differ about what truth is. We're going to listen carefully to what this man says truth is. And this is his forum, and so we will not speak or otherwise cause a disturbance until he's true. And we have questions answered properly. Thank you. Next, next point on the uh, catechism. By what means or method does Scientology differ from other religious philosophies? Their answer? In Scientology, there is no attempt to change another person's beliefs or persuade the person away from his own religious practice. I disagree with that. Ed Scientology makes it possible for any religion to attain its goals and therefore is a religion of religions. I strongly disagree with that, as do other Christians. Most, I mean, every Christian that I've ever known and read about also disagrees with that. It's going on. What does Scientology think of other religions? Scientology respects all religions. 
Scientology does not conflict with other religions or other religious practices. I strongly disagree with that. What does Scientology say about, have to say about Christianity? Christianity is one of the greatest religions of the world. I agree with that. <laughs> and Scientology supports its civilizing influence and respects the words of Jesus Christ. That is not true. That part is not true, according to Scientology. Does Scientology believe in Jesus Christ? Let me, let me back up and qualify that a little bit. Does not respect the word of Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ existed, then that makes that not true. Now, things that were attributed to him, as they would say, they might agree with some of those statements as they pick and choose. Does Scientology believe in Jesus Christ, and is there not redemption only through Christ? Answer. There are probably many types of redemption. That of Christ was to heaven. Jesus Christ was the Savior of mankind, the Son of God, and instructed his disciples to bring wisdom and good health to man and promise mankind immortality. In Scientology, we believe these three things Christ intended for man. It is our mission as Scientologists, as it was Christ's disciples, to bring wisdom, good health, and immortality to mankind. There are many great religions, religious prophets and leaders, each of whom has left a path toward God. Religious prophets are recognized in Scientology as the torchbearers of culture and civilization. Well, that's true. There's some truth in there. There's some, not some fabrications or some falsehoods in there as well. Uh, obviously, if they don't believe, uh, obviously they're in, antithetical, or Christi antithetical to Christianity and the fact that they believe that there are many types of redemption and that Christ was a way to heaven. In other words, the implication is that there are many paths to towards redemption, as the rest of the content says, towards redemption. Of course, Scientology really believes that these all fell far short, and Scientology is the epitome, the ultimate, the fulfillment, the religion of religions, as they say. And uh, therefore, it's certainly not compatible with Christianity in, any, uh, in, in the most essential form. Now, Christianity teaches clearly the essence of Christianity, what Christianity is. Not secondary, but primary, is the belief that God entered into humanity. There's one personal being, a God, who rules over his creation. And God defines all things because he created. Everything lives in dependence, or should be living in dependence upon God, a personal being, separate from, infinitely separate from man. Man made in his image, reflecting certain of his attributes, but is still an infinite gap between his ultimate reality and man's uh, image of God, and man is separated from God. He's separated from God, and he needs redemption. Redemption means union back with God, union both spiritually and ethically. And, of course, God came into the earth and provided that sacrifice to redeem a man to himself, expressing his love, and for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son and his justice, his holiness. He provided that way that man can be reconciled to God. And then through that, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and his church, these are the means, the instructions, his word, to transform human nature, to transform us back to what we're designed to be, to help us understand about our, who we are, what our purpose is, where we're going, and what our family relationships ought to be, what our business relationships ought to be, what our relationship to the environment needs to be, in ecology, etc. All things. It's a comprehensive world and life view and instructions. Technology, to use Scientology's terminology, is spiritual technology and it's truth, giving you instructions of how to walk in that light. But the essence of Christianity is completely denied by Scientology. The essence, who Jesus was and what salvation is, is completely antithetical in Christianity. To say that they're compatible is a gross misrepresentation. For instance, this is from what is Scientology. In Scientology, there's no attempt to change a person's beliefs or persuade him from any religion which he already belongs. I, again, will maintain and demonstrate that this is not true. Not overtly, necessarily, but certainly... Uh, it does 
it does require a change. Uh, Scientology makes it possible for any religion to, aint, uh, to attain to its goals and therefore a religion of religions. That certainly is not true of Christianity uh, and, and Islam and, and um, the theistic Judaism and the theistic religions. This is an overhead from one of their publications, which I think pretty well sums up the problem, or the position, I mean, of Scientology. Oh, you're compatible. We respect all religions. You know, we don't ask anybody to change their religion. But if you want to be a follower of Jesus or Muhammad or, or uh, Buddha or whatever, then you need to be like, the, like them, Moses. You need to be down the hill looking up toward the Scientologists to be your ultimate fulfillment. Another picture that's similar in their book. I don't know who this is. I guess it's supposed to be Thomas Jefferson. But <laughs> religious leaders, man can find answers to his timeless questions and gain true spiritual freedom with Scientology. You know, Jesus and Moses, they all look to Scientology. That's the ultimate fulfillment of their religion. The second concern we have about Scientology is its practices. Does Scientology have a long and consistent history of abuse, of lying, and illegal activity? We hope to present the facts uh, as best we understand about these issues. For instance, some judicial decisions about Scientology. From, uh, these are from court cases which had documentary evidence um, uh, in the court. It said Scientology, this is from a Justice Lacey in London, Scientology is both immoral and socially obnoxious. It is corrupt, sinister, and dangerous. It is corrupt because it is based on lies and deceit and has as its real objective money and power, Mr. Mr. Hubbard. It is sinister because it indulges in infamous practices both to its adherents who did not toe the line unquestionably, and those who criticize it or oppose it. It is dangerous because it is out to capture people and to indoctrinate and brainwash them so that they can become unquestioning captives and tools of the cult, withdrawn from ordinary thought, living in relationships with others. Also, Judge Breckenridge in Los Angeles Superior Court in the Armstrong, I think, case said, uh, inserted there the court record, is replete with evidence that Scientology is nothing in reality but a vast enterprise to extract a maximum amount of money from its adepts from pseudo-scientific theories and to exercise a kind of blackmail against persons who do not wish to continue with their sect. The organization is clearly schizophrenic and paranoid, and is, this bizarre combination seems to be a reflection of its founder, Mr. L. Ron Hubbard. He goes on to say this, in addition to violating and abusing its own members' civil rights, the organization over the years with its, quote, fair game, unquote, doctrine, has harassed and abused those persons not in the church whom it perceives as enemies. The organization is clearly schizophrenic and paranoid as this bizarre combination seems to be a reflection of its founder. The evidence portrays a man who has been virtually a pathological liar when it comes to his history, background, and achievements. The writings and documents in evidence additionally reflect his egoism, greed, avarice, lust for power, and vindictiveness, and aggressiveness against persons perceived by him to be disloyal or hostile. Now, these are the opinions of some judicial bodies, courts. That's just a couple. And they could be wrong. They could be wrong. I'm sure Scientologists have been told, of course, that they're wrong. But when you start having case after case and testimony after testimony and it's a consistent pattern over many, many years, and I can personally testify, personally testify to some of these things from my own experience, what, pretty soon you've got to stop denying it. 
you've got to face reality. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that certain levels of Scientology may not be of some benefit to people on a temporal level. Now, of course, as a Christian, we don't think it's in any benefit spiritually. A quick look at the brief history of Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard was primarily a science fiction writer. In 1950, he wrote an article in a magazine called a, a, uh, Astounding Science Fiction. Let me read to you from the Los Angeles Times article. By the way, uh, a lot of the material, some of the material we have in here, uh, is in a wonderful, I think very thorough expose of the Church of Scientology. Uh, in the Los Angeles Times several years ago. It was a six, I think a six part, full, I mean several pages, full pages in the Los Angeles Times, investigative journalistic reports of Scientology. And this is available to you uh, at our book table. Uh, we encourage you to get that for a really good understanding of the history and practices and some of the corruption, etc., and legal problems of Scientology. The Times article says this. The article from Astounding Science Fiction um, claimed to be a source of the, to uncover the source of man's problems. It grew into a book written in one draft in just 30 days, according to Hubbard, entitled Dianetics, the Modern Science of Mental Health. It would become the most important book of Hubbard's life. The book's introduction declared that Hubbard had invented a new, quote, mental science, a feat more important than perhaps than the invention of the wheel, the control of fire, and the development of mathematics, unquote, according to Hubbard. Hubbard himself said that he had uncovered the source of and the cure for virtually every ailment known to man. Dianetics, he said, could restore withered limbs, men broken bones, erase the wrinkles of age, and dramatically increase intelligence. Not surprisingly, the nation's mental health professionals were unimpressed. <laughs> but Dianetics was an instant bestseller when it hit the stands in May of 1950, and it made Hubbard an overnight celebrity. Hubbard had tapped the public's growing fascination with psychotherapy, then largely accessible only to the affluent. In the book, Hubbard claimed to have discovered the previously unknown reactive mind, a depository uh, for emotionally or physically painful events in a person's life. These traumatic experiences called engrams cause a wide a variety of psychosomatic illnesses, including migraine headaches, ulcers, allergies, arthritis, poor vision, and the common cold, Hubbard said. The goal of Dianetics, Hubbard said, is to purge these painful experiences and to create a, quote, clear, unquote, individual who is able to realize his or her full potential. That was the birth of Dianetics and eventually Scientology and eventually the Church of Scientology. History shows that Dianetics and Scientology did not begin as a church. It evolved into a church. Uh, it was actually the, quote, science of mental health, unquote, and a psychotherapy theory and practice or technique, but it evolved into a religion for various reasons. I feel some are legitimate reasons, and I feel some are illegitimate reasons. By the way, in deference to Scientologists who are here, uh, we respect within your own system your right to believe what you want. Uh, your right to believe it, but you also have a right to hear other information and to evaluate it and not be hindered from that evaluation or observation. But uh, within Scientology, there's the teaching that if a person hears information, secret doctrine, before he is ready, he can catch pneumonia and will die. And we're going to, well, I mean, you, you shouldn't. I mean, we have beliefs that they might find to be um, um, ridiculous, too. So I mean, you need to respect what they believe, the right to believe that. But um, so I'm, we're going to be talking about OT levels, OT3 and 4 and 1 through through 8. We'll be talking about what's, what's in there, the content. So if you 
are worried about uh, you know this this effect happening to you, the situation happening to you. You need to leave uh, for a while, and you come back this afternoon uh, because we're going to be talking about that. So I just want to let you know, in deference to your beliefs. A little bit about Scientology theology or cosmology, ontology, as all those seminary words. I read from the Time, Los Angeles Times Magazine piece, uh, newspaper piece. Collectively, Thetans created the universe. Thetan, by the way, is the Scientology understanding of the true self, the higher self, the soul, spirit, the true nature of man, which is good. Helen Hubbard taught that the nature is basically good and not sinful. But they, then they'll add that, but he does have aberrations that are painful experiences or memories of painful experiences in this life and in past lives. They do believe in reincarnation. It's interesting, I'll read their literature, and some Scientologists in print say that they do believe in reincarnation, and their public, some of their publications say they don't believe in reincarnation, and then Phoenix Lecture says that they do believe in reincarnation, and really it becomes kind of a word, silly word game, semantics. They do believe in past lives. They do believe in working off of the negative experiences, which is essentially the same as karmic balance of Hinduism, which the analogies are uh, inescapable. So reincarnation, whatever you want to, what term you want to call it, is still antithetical to Christianity, directly in opposition to Christianity. Yet Hubbard lies and misrepresents history. He's supposed to be a, a, this, this uh, brilliant guy, and he is brilliant. I mean, Hubbard is definitely, was definitely brilliant. He was a genius. But so was Joseph Smith of the Mormon Church. And so was Adolf Hitler. That doesn't make them good or right because they're a genius. It just makes them clever. And there's a difference. But going on. Collectively, Thetans created the universe. Thetans created the universe. A bunch of souls, a bunch of spirits, individuals, created the universe. All the stars and the planets, every plant and animal, to function within their creation, Thetans built bodies for themselves of wildly, wildly varying appearances, the human form being just one. Um, but each Thetan is vulnerable to painful experiences that can diminish his powers and create emotional and physical problems in the individual it inhabits. The goal of Scientology is to purge these experiences from the Thetan, making him omnipotent, making it omnipotent and returning, spirit, returning spiritual and bodily health to its host. The painful experiences are called engrams. Hubbard said that some happened by accident uh, from a ancient planetary wars or, uh, for example, while others are intentionally inflicted by other Thetans who have gone bad and want power. In Scientology, these engrams are called implants. These engrams are called implants. Don't forget, R6. Uh, Christianity was an implant, according to Hubbard. According to Hubbard, the bad Thetans through the eons have electronically, electronically implanted other Thetans with information intended to confuse them and make them forget the powers they inherently possess. Um, shrouded in mystery and kept in locked cabinets at select church locations, the course is called Operating Thetan Three. Now, of course, Scientology has certain procedures which cost a lot of money. Uh, they call it donations. Uh, I've never been in a church except for a cult, the Mormon church, and the old Worldwide Church of God, the Armstrong Plain Truth Group. I've never been in a church, a uh, mainstream church anyway, that required, required donations as mandatory in order to receive spiritual direction. Huge sums. But, going on, they proceed along this, what they call the bridge, uh, through to a process, you'll hear more about this later, uh, called CLEAR. And CLEAR has certain promises attached to it, that it's expectations you're supposed to achieve, which you've heard some already. And then beyond that, uh, since apparently there wasn't, uh, uh, people weren't achieving, I mean, the, the money stopped and, and there, were, there wasn't a spiritual level of attainment, there were others other uh, levels invented or discovered, as they would say, by L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, and these are operating faith in levels. Enshrouded in mystery and kept in locked cabinets at select 
church locations. The course is called Operating Satan Three, billed by the church as, quote, the final secret of the catastrophe which laid waste to this sector of the galaxy, unquote. It is taught only by the most advanced, to the most advanced church members, ranging, at fees ranging to $6,000. Hubbard told his followers that while unlocking the secret, he became mentally, uh, he became very ill, almost lost his body, and somehow or another brought it off and obtained the material and was able to live through it, unquote. Here's what he said he learned. 75 million years ago, a tyrant named Zenu uh, ruled the Galactic Confederation an alliance of 76 planets, including Earth, then call, called Tigiak. To control overpopulation and to solidify his power, Zenu instructed his loyal officers to capture beings of all shapes and sizes from the various planets, freeze them in a compound of alcohol and glycol, and fly them by the billions to Earth in planes resembling DC-8s. Remember now, he was writing back in the 50s and 60s on this. This reflects some of his revelation. Uh, and he was a science fiction writer, too. Um, some of the beings were captured after they were duped into showing up on a phony tax investigation. The beings were deposited or chained near ten volcanoes scattered throughout the planet. After hydrogen bombs were dropped on them, their thetans were captured by Xenu's forces and implanted with sexual perversion, religion, and other notions to obscure their memory from what Zenu had done. Soon after, a revolt erupted. Zenu was imprisoned in a wire cage within a mountain where he remains today, but the damage was done. During the last 75 million years, these implanted thetans have affixed themselves by the thousands to people on Earth called body thetans. They overwhelm the main thetan who resides within a person, causing confusion and e internal conflict. In other words, they make these astounding claims about the state of clear uh, promises, how you can be rid of all these problems. You can have uh, such power, and you can be at a higher and better level than anybody that walks around the face of the earth. You can be in a, in a much better state than anybody. But once you get there to clear, you find out something else. That's what I call a bait and switch. All of a sudden, you find out that now that you've reached clear, you're in mortal danger. I mean, I thought I was in the best state I could be in. Now I'm discovering I'm in a mortal danger. Until you learn about body thetans, these body thetans are attached to you, and you can get yourself clear of those. We've got some more courses, and, and you're in mortal danger unless you get these things taken care of to get these things clear. In the, uh, quoting the article again, LA Times, in the Operating Thetan III Corps, Scientologists are taught to scan their bodies for, quote, pressure points, indicating the presence of these bad Thetans. Using techniques described by Hubbard, church members take, make telepathic contact with these Thetans and remind them of Xenu's treachery. With that, Hubbard said the, Thetan, the Thetans will detach themselves. So you take them back to Incident Two, as they say, and then they will slough off. In the Hubbard Communications Bulletin, 1963, called the Heaven Bulletin, Hubbard states that he has been to heaven. He claims that uh, in the bulletin that, quote, based on over a thousand hours of research auditing, analyzing the facsimiles of the reactive mind, and with the help of the Mark V electrometer, it is scientific research, and it is not in, the, in any way based upon the mere opinion of the researcher. The contents of this uh, bulletin uh, discover the apparent underlying impulses of religious zealotism and the source of the religious mania and insanity which terrorized Earth over the ages and has given religion the appearance of, in, appearance of insanity. The goals problem mass implants, which are uh, the apparent basic source of aberration and human travail, which began with the goal to forget, were cynically done in heaven. For a long while, some people have been cross with me for my lack of cooperation and believing in a Christian heaven, God and Christ. I have never said that I didn't disbelieve in a big Satan, but there was certainly something very corny about heaven and all. 
Now, I have to apologize. There was a heaven, not too unlike, the, not too unlike in cruel betrayal, the heaven of the assassins of the 12th century, like everyone else, dramatized the whole track implants, if a bit more so. The symbol of the crucified Christ is very apt indeed. It's a symbol of a Thetan betrayed. He goes on to say, the first time I arrived and the moment of the implant, at, and the moment of the implant to forget was dated at 43,891,832,611,177 years, 344 days, 10 hours and 20 minutes and 40 seconds from 10 and 10, uh, uh, 10 o'clock and two and a half minutes p.m. <laughs> we have to understand, Scientology is very is exact science, exact science. Um, daylight Greenwich time, May 9, 1963. The second series was dated to the moment uh, of, to, of the implant to forget as, and he goes through a long list again, uh, May 9, 1963. Again, this is what he said he found in heaven. Further, we have in our hands on, the, on an appalling bit of technology where the world is concerned. With rapidity and a meter, it can be shown that heaven is a false dream and that the old religion was based on a very painful lie, a cynical betrayal. What does this do to any religious, religious nature in Scientology? It strengthens it. New religions always overthrow the false gods of the old. They do something to better man. They, we can improve man. We can show the old God, gods false. We can open up the universe as a happier place in which the spirit may dwell. May I rest my case on that issue? Does Christianity come, uh, is there a conflict? They say no. They say that the goals of Christianity can be achieved. That's a lie. That is a written lie compared to what else? L. Ron Hubbard says, on the other side of his mouth, at these secret levels that are kept from its members and are trying to be kept from the public as well is knowing what they disbelieve, what he believes, that's all. We don't ask to, we don't ask to divulge the specific individual uh, counseling information, but just what they officially believe. Uh, just to uh, finish up and to clean up some housekeeping uh, here before we get into this, I also want you to be aware of a, another magazine that's available. Wasn't too available, I understand, here in Clearwater. Somebody bought them all up before they could go out to the public. But uh, the Time Magazine article, uh, Scientology, the Cult of Greed. Now, let me say this uh, about this magazine. The Church of Scientology uh, is right now in litigation with Time Warner over the all this article. They essentially sued the Time magazine on four statements, what I understand from talking to the Time lawyers uh, before I came down here, on four, four uh, statements made in the, in the article, one of which has already been settled and dismissed, uh, dropped by the Church of Scientology. And now it's three. That was the one that was uh, settled or dismissed was or withdrawn was the Fishman uh, Gertz uh, uh, statement where Fishman as a Scientologist claimed that he was counseled and basically uh, coerced the idea into killing his psychiatrist and then committing suicide, end of cycle on himself. That was a statement that was in here that was uh, dropped in a separate lawsuit, in a lawsuit with uh, Fishman. Now, um, I did receive a letter, as did the church receive a letter, from the attorneys representing the Church of Scientology International, saying that uh, they understand that uh, we were going to be handing out, distributing this magazine. Again, I don't know how. I can only assume by adding one plus one equals two, how they knew about that, how uh, a one, a private conversation between two people on the telephone was the only information about that that went out, how that was known by the Church of Scientology. And, but, uh, I can't, and by the way, the letter said that this magazine has already had several adjudications made 
and judgments rendered uh, on statements in this article, in the lawsuits, and that have been found to be defamatory and actionable. Uh, several statements have already been, in other words, they've been settled, they've been, uh, they, they have, uh, settlements have been made, or admissions have been made, or judgments have been rendered in the court of law about these defamatory statements. Therefore, if you distribute this magazine, then you'll be uh, basically with a threatened to sue me or to sue the church. Well, I said, I didn't hear about this. I didn't realize that that had happened. Last I heard, it was still in process to be tried. So I called to find out myself what the status of the case was. And from the attorney, the lead attorney from the Time Warner said, absolutely false. These are absolutely false statements. There has been no settlements made. All the statements that are, the three statements that are made there are still uh, proceeding towards trial. Those statements are absolutely false. So, you know, I'm letting you know about that. I'm letting you be aware of that information. But at the same time, uh, these are available back there. These are reprints from the Time Magazine article on Scientology, The Cult of Greed, available back there at the book table for you to uh, purchase. Wall Street Journal says the Church of Scientology is launching a campaign to improve its image. The Church of Scientology, having just won a, a tax-exempt status after a bitter decades-long battle with the Internal Revenue Service, is now ready to take on media critics uh, and in a major promotional campaign to try and mend its public image. Now the expansion effort is about to start with a new book, Combating uh, Combative Advertising Blitz and, and Combative Advertising Blitz, publication of, quote, what is Scientology, unquote. It's a 590-page paperback pr priced at 1995. Well, I was, uh, the Scientologists were gracious enough to give me uh, two or three copies of that book, a hardback version. Uh, judging by the price list of what I've seen other Scientology books for, that, really, that was a, really a gracious uh, gift to me. I appreciate it. Uh, it considers itself to be a non-denominational in that it welcomes new members from all mainstream faiths, purporting to allow them to realize their full spiritual potential to help, in, help them understand how the mind works. They have produced, the campaign includes a half-hour documercial entitled The Problem of Life. Have you seen that? Anybody seen that? I've seen it. Um, it dramatizes the story of a couple who are looking for answers to questions of life. A spokesman said, uh, a spokesman, spokeswoman for the Church of Scientology um, says, what is it all about? What is life all about? What are we, where are we going? Well, wouldn't it be good to have a job that is fulfilling? The couple unsuccessfully visits a doctor, a psychotherapist, a marriage counselor. At the end, they find out Scientology could provide the answers, the spokeswoman said. The documercial ends with a 10-minute direct sales pitch from Jeff Pomerantz, the soap opera star. Two-minute commercials, which the church says intends to run nationwide, will pitch the book using the same approach as the promotions to booksellers. Uh, the spokeswoman uh, says anyone who has heard about the church can now turn to a book written by the church itself. Hmm. Um, well... That's, that would be true. That would be a true statement if the information was truthful. Oftentimes, uh, um, I'm challenged by Mormons. If you, they say, listen, if you want to find out about Mormonism, why don't you go to a Mormon? Makes sense, doesn't it? What about this statement? If you want to find out about Watergate, go to Richard Nixon. You know, it's true if it's honest information or if it's total disclosure. But that's not the case, as we, I think, have begun to see here. Now, the, well, sorry, it's not necessarily true, but it also is, could be necessarily true as well. I was, by the way, I was asked by a gentleman uh, very cordially, I appreciate, during the break and the intermission, if it would not be appropriate to have Scientologists come and offer some comments uh, here during this uh, seminar. And I said, well, I understand that uh, desire, but that would not be appropriate. The Scientologists have had and will continue to have, and I'm sure will have, 
forums, many forums, by which to express its points of view, perspectives. Uh, the point here is that we, the, the, from a Christian perspective, in our evidence and documentation is that they don't always tell the truth. Or they don't know the truth themselves about some of these upper issues, upper levels of issues. I was asked, uh, I was, um, uh, I got a phone call from this representative of the Church of Scientology to come and meet with me to talk and discuss. And I said, I'll be glad to, which we did. We've had a, one or two discussions. And um, they said, I asked them, though, I said, well, which level on the bridge are you? And this person was a minister, she said, but yet had not even obtained the state of official cleared them had not been officially declared clear. And I said, well, the things I want to talk about mainly are on the operating Satan levels, the spiritual levels, so to speak, as you said. And so how can, I, how can you talk to me about those things? How do you even know about those things? He says, well, Mr. Branch, all that material is ready, readily available to anyone in all of our literature. It's in, in, the, in the bookstores, in the Scientology bookstores. All that information, I said, all that information is available? Is it in public domain? She said, yes. So, uh, but individuals sometimes don't know about it. And I think this person obviously didn't even know about some of the other things that have been happening, uh, cover-ups and things in their church themselves. So, that is not the appropriate. I did say, um, you know, isn't it, isn't it proper to have a debate? I said, yes. This is not a forum for debate. This is a Christian presentation of our perspective and uh, from a, both a religious belief standpoint and a, the practical methodology, how it, how it involves uh, uh, ethics compared to Christian values and ethics. And um, I said, if you want to organize, if your church wants to organize a formal public debate about these issues, I'll be glad to entertain that idea. And, uh, and I offer that now. Uh, we're glad to uh, get a certain number of people to come down and have a public debate about these issues, if you'd like. Now, uh, this is from a, the president of the Church of Scientology in San Francisco. I imagine he's an official spokesman of the church. It says this, Scientology was discovered, researched, and organized by L. Ron Hubbard, not invented. As a religious teaching, it is revelatory, yet grounded in experience and tradition of Eastern religions. The Scientology codes of conduct and system of ethical behavior aspiring to the right action and reverence for all life all find its roots in Buddhism. Another basic concept of Scientology shares with universal religious thought is reincarnation. Universal religious thought is reincarnation. Like Buddhism, Hinduism, and early Christianity, Scientology believes that the individual is an immortal being has assumed many bodies in his evolution in the physical universe toward ultimate realization and freedom from material bondage. Well, you can leave out Christianity there. That's a misrepresentation. Scientology is non-denominational. As in Hinduism, Scientology values other religious thought, does not seek to persuade a man of one religion to change to another, but rather to validate the way God is already guiding that individual, whether it be by way of simplicity, of Quakerism, or the rich imagery and ceremony and investments of Roman Catholicism. Well, that's hogwash. That is, again, a blatant mischaracterization, misrepresentation, and falsehood. Um, anyway, again, a quoting from a uh, Hubbard uh, publication. Quote, somebody on this planet about 600 B.C. found some pieces of R6. I don't know how they found it, either by watching Mad Men or something, but since that time, they have used it and it became what is known as Christianity. The man on the cross, there was no Christ. The Roman Catholic Church, through watching the dramatizations of people, picked up some little fragments of R6. Again, more, kind of more information about this idea of the implant and made-up myth of the cross and Christianity and, and who God is. Um, we'll take up here a little bit more at the, after lunch uh, on the idea of what Hubbard says about reincarnation and again what he is, how he says it's compatible with Christianity and show you how much an error that is but also a little bit about um, um, some of these other doctrinal points. After lunch also we will be, we will be talking about the source, the source with a capital S 
of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard himself. He is considered to be yet to be on source, according to Scientology vernacular, meaning correctly using the technology, correctly meaning without deviation whatsoever. Otherwise, there's real danger in that, uh, in that spiritual danger in that. So we're talking about the validity and the veracity of the source of Scientology as well after lunch. Um, and also some about the methods of harassment and intimidation that's been a consistent pattern of the Church of Scientology as well as the fair game policy which is supposed to be uh, not enforced anymore but the suppressive person treatment which is the same as fair game is certainly continuing to be enforced and we'll talk about that a little bit as well.